Oh yes, hello. My name is Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today we're talking about slow motion. Slow motion. I don't know why I did that. I probably could have just speed ramped my voice, but whatever. So we'll learn how to make it nice and smooth like this. And even speed rampy like this. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's cool. That's music video status. Let's get rid of all this extra stuff. All right, first things first, what is slow motion? Well, I mean, obviously it's something moving slower than it does in real life. But a lot of the time when you think about slow motion, you think about taking a normal piece of video and then just slowing it down. And then you think it's gonna look amazing like a movie, right? Well, this particular clip and basically any clip that looks good in slow motion was shot a certain way so that it looks good in slow motion. It's shot with a higher frame rate than you would normally play back video with. So this is shot at 240 frames a second, which is 10 times faster than 24 frames a second, which you use for like film. And then what we're doing is playing back each frame at the normal speed that we'd normally play things back at. So what that means is it turns into slow motion. Because think about it, if you had a 240 frame video that you shot at 240 frames a second, that's one second of time. Then you bring it into the timeline and you play it back at 24 frames a second, that ends up being 10 seconds long. So let's make this 10 seconds long. So right here, this is one second of real time. Crazy, huh? So I'll make a copy here. So in normal time, it would look like this, right? One second of video turns into 10 seconds of slow motion. The reason I'm beating this into the ground is if you shoot something at normal speed and you try and slow it down, here's what's gonna happen. I'll just take this footage and slow it down even more. You see how it gets stuttery like this. That's because what it's doing is letting each frame take twice as long which our eyes are not used to. This is playing back at 12 frames a second, basically, which would be okay for something like animation, but in real life, it looks real weird. The good news is there's ways to kind of work around this a little bit, but let's start with some basics because I just straight up blew past all of that. First things first, the footage that was shot here in our media pool, if I right click this and go to clip attributes, here at the very top of this first tab in the clip attributes, we have video frame rate. And this was shot at 240, and normally it would come in something like that. Again, we play this back. And it's really hard to play back at 240 frames a second. And if we drag that down into our timeline, what that'll do is play this back in real time because it was shot at 240 frames a second. It's putting 240 frames into each second of video. And for every frame on this timeline, it's just finding the nearest frame. So at 13 frames, it's looking at this piece of footage and saying, what's the closest frame out of 240 frames to right here in time? And then it's displaying that. The next frame, it's doing the same thing. It's really throwing away a ton of frames when you put something that's a higher frame rate into the timeline like this. So if you did shoot this at a higher frame rate and you want it in slow motion, the best thing to do is right click here in the media pool, go to clip attributes, and set your frame rate to whatever your timeline frame rate is, which for us is 24, and I'll hit OK. And now, when we drag this in, that's gonna play back this buttery smooth slow motion. Because the frames are all just kind of stretched out and each frame in the timeline is exactly a frame in this footage. That's why it looks nice, why it plays back beautifully. So that's the very best way to do slow motion is shoot it at a high frame rate and then set your footage to play back at your timeline frame rate. Then it comes in slow motion. Let's say we shoot this at normal speed and we want it to be slowed down. Well, the way that you slow something down, I'll just cut a little piece of this here, is in the timeline, if you select whatever clip you want to slow down and hit Control R, that'll bring up your retime controls. You can also right click on any clip and click retime controls and that'll bring that up. And what this lets you do is change the speed of the clip right here in the timeline. So down here where this says 100%, you can click this drop down and change speed to something like 50% and it will make this twice as long and it will play this back half as fast. So right now we have kind of this stuttery look. 
which is what you'll run into if you're actually slowing down footage less than 24 frames a second. You can also speed things up, change speed to let's say 200, that'll play something back faster. Of course, this is already slow motion, so it's still slower than normal, but it's faster than how it came in. Another cool thing with the speed change controls is wherever you're at in the timeline, you can set your playhead to, let's say, right before this drumstick hits. And if you open this little drop down, you can do something called add speed point. So I can click on that. And what that does is kind of just say, hey, this frame is going to be right here. And then before and after it, you can play whatever speed you want, but this is where this frame lives. So we can do something like speed up the beginning of this and then have it play slow motion after. So I'll just take this drop down and we'll say change speed to 800% and that'll speed that up. And then look what happens. It goes really fast and then slows down. And we can do even more speed points. Like let's say we wanna speed it up like right here. Again, add speed point. And then we want it to be fast, 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 fast until he hits that drum again. We'll add another speed point here. And then in between these two, we'll make this really fast. Change speed to 800. And so now what it's doing is playing this really fast, playing at normal speed, playing it fast, playing normal speed, which ends up being a really cool effect. Kind of ramps that footage. Very, very cool. So you have a lot of freedom if you bring in some high frame rate footage, you can get some really nice looking results here. And then when you're done doing your speed ramp stuff, you can just click this close button for speed change right here, and that'll take away all those controls. The other thing you can do when you have your retime controls up is just grab the edge of the clip when it turns into that double arrow, and you can stretch it back and forth to speed it up or slow it down. This is great if you want this to be a specific length, I do this a lot with B-roll, something that's like, it's just not long enough to fit into a certain edit. You know, I'll just stretch it out to be like just a little bit longer. And most of the time you wouldn't really notice it. That's a great little fix that isn't necessarily about slow motion, but you can kind of like stretch a clip if you need to. Okay, so let's talk about what if we do need to make something slower than how we shot it, but we don't want this to be so jerky. That's when our retime options come in. So let's select this. This is at 50%. I'll just close speed change for now. And over here in the inspector at the very bottom, it says retime and scaling. If we double click that, we have a couple different options here. The first two have to do with doing our slow motion. This retime process, there's a few different options here. Nearest, frame blend, and optical flow. What nearest will do is for whatever frame we're on, it's just gonna find the nearest frame. So every two frames, because we're slowing this down 50%, it's only gonna move every two frames. So the closest frame is this one at 3005. At 3006, it's the same one. That's the closest one. And then the next frame, it's gonna move it. Same, move it, same, move it, same, move it, same. That's what nearest is. And that's generally your project settings by default. But if we switch this to frame blend, that will do a little bit of a different thing. What it will do is any frame that's in between two real frames, it's just going to kind of try and blend the two frames that are around it together, which sometimes looks great and sometimes looks really weird. In this case, it might look okay because we have a lot of kind of like water spray and stuff like that. And it definitely probably looks a little better than having that kind of jerky look, but with especially these kind of like raindrops, you get them kind of turning off and on kind of flickering because what it's really doing is taking a normal frame like this one and then it's blending it 50% with this frame and 50% with the next frame which if you have fast motion there's two raindrops here this one and this one mixed together this is kind of a quick and dirty way to get a little bit better motion without it just killing your computer like this way is okay like it's decent but the dopeness other than shooting it right the dopeness is optical flow so if we click on optical flow here for retime process with this clip selected, what this will do is it will look at all of the pixels in each frame and it will figure out what each little thing is moving to. So let's go in here. And if we go through our footage here, what it's doing is it's looking at each little point here and it's trying to estimate what would each frame in between these frames look like. And it doesn't do it perfectly, but it's a little nicer than just blending them together. It actually does a little bit of big brain thinking on this. Big brain thinking. So now if we play this back, we get a little bit nicer motion. It's a little bit smoother and it looks a little bit better than just frame blending. Now, if we want this even nicer, 
we can go down here to where it says motion estimation. And I think by default, it's at standard faster. And so the farther we go down here, the nicer this motion will look. So if we go to standard better, that's going to do a better job at estimating that motion. It's going to look a little bit nicer, a little more realistic, but it's going to be harder on your computer. And that pretty much works for all the way down here. So enhanced better again, will generally look a little bit nicer, but takes more computer power. And then if you want to probably just about kill your computer, you can go to speed warp and speed warp does a really good job, but like it takes, a while. takes some computer power there, but you can do something like this and then right click and say render cache color output, something like that. And it will sort of pre-render this so that you can play it back without your computer dying. Just make this a little bit shorter so we don't have to wait so long. And of course, depending on your system, this might not be as big of a deal. My system's getting getting up there. It's it's like Shadow from Incredible Journey status. So now we have pretty nice looking slow motion. And again, this is twice as slow as it was shot, even though it was shot slow. But the difference here is this is without optical flow. Really jerky like this. And this is with optical flow, so it looks a lot smoother. So play around with that retime process, that motion estimation. Shoot your footage in high frame rate if you can. If not, you can use those kind of tricks. Control R to bring up your retime controls. You can add speed points, change the speed in each section to get some really cool effects. So there you go. That's a big old rundown on slow motion in Resolve. Oh, baby. Look at this guy. He's very excited. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Why haven't you done it? <laughs> I don't, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll see you guys.